the best food, too. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about my background. In 2006, I was with Bell Labs, and we got um, money from the Irish government. The Irish government wanted us to come to Ireland to open up a Bell Labs and to do supply chain research. And um, so, you know, I was in Ireland, ready to start this group, and I said, what should I call this group? And I said, okay, supply chain research. It doesn't spell anything. So I said, okay, I'll call it supply chain analytics research. At least that's spelled SCAR. <laughs> it sounds really good. It sounds like it's really tough. Um, so in 2006, I launched a supply chain analytics research group, and that name sort of caught on. So other groups then called themselves supply chain analytics. Um, but at that time, it was, it was fairly new. But I, what I want to talk about is really, I think it's really, it's a reason why it's really taking off. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe what I think supply chain analytics is, and then why is it significant at this time and some implications for how to participate. So what is supply chain analytics? And my definition is really it's a combination of various areas, which is of course supply chain, um, data analytics, and I'll talk about data analytics. Did you know that data analytics is like the highest, one of the hottest careers around right now to be a data scientist or a data analyst, and information technology. So it combines those three fields into one. And in order to be successful, you have to have a little bit of a mixture of all three. And a lot of times when I go to hire people, um, I'm looking for that analytical capability, along with a, a sort of like a computer savvy ability to navigate all the really to extract data, to be able to mine data, to understand the data. And sometimes the supply chain comes with just experience. So that's the avenue, and I'll tell you why. So when we do analytics, it's always about three things. It's always about providing information to get data, to make decisions. And that's most of how, do, how does a company make decisions? Well, it's going to make decisions at the operational level, at the tactical level, and at the strategic level. And as, as a supply chain analyst or data analyst, we have to address all three levels. And let me show you. So there are three types of um, decisions that we make. One I call descriptive. And that's really asking the question, what happened or what is happening? So this is about the past. You want to, you, you have a lot of data that you've collected. How well did you ship? Where did you ship? It's about looking at the past and saying, what happened? Okay, and then you come to some conclusions. As you go to predictive, your, your, again, the name describes it, is what is likely to happen? This is where you start getting to forecasting. So I've been working on, you can forecast your demand, you can forecast, for me, I work on um, cellular phones, so I'm looking at forecasting, return rates, you know, that kind of stuff. And then the question is, after you forecast the return rates of, let's say, cellular phones, the question is, what is, what are you gonna do about it? What is the best outcome? How do I take um, what I call Scripted analytics, how do I optimize what I do to make sure that I now predict and now I take action? And what are those actions? So, uh, data scientists, so probably 80 to 90 percent of the companies out there do, do descriptive. They look at the past. A few companies, um, of course, they do forecasting for products, they do prescriptive. This is a, a predictive. Prescriptive is a little bit newer, it's optimization of that decision. So I'm not gonna, these are some questions that you might ask. I mean, I'm sure a lot of companies here have tried to say, okay, where should I locate my distribution center? And that to me is an optimization question, but it's also predictive. So when you do, a, when you try to say, okay, I wanna locate my distribution centers where are to optimize, for example, cost. I want to have the lowest cost in my supply chain. So what do I need to do? I need to look at 
have, I had to forecast, where am I planning on selling my stuff? And then I look at, then where in the world should I locate my distribution centers? And then to optimize cost, I might look at the cost of the facility inside, like for example, Poland, Germany, in China. How do I minimize the transportation leg? What, you know, what, what, how much does it cost for, in terms of manpower? And I want to take all those factors in and, say, and, then, and then minimize that cost. So that is op an optimization. That's also a predictive a analytics question. Um, a good, I like this, if anybody invests uh, money, um, how do, what's the best mix of portfolio investments that will maximize gain? So you, you want to maximize your return, but at the same time, um, what, what is that choice of that in investment, and which ones? Um, and then I've seen really interesting problems in patient care around like scheduling of hospitals. How do I move people through a hospital so they get the care in the shortest amount of time? But also for a, for a hospital, how do I either maximize revenue or minimize cost? Um, so I, I know you can't see this, but <laughs> Um, these are all these equations. They're supposed to be equations. Um, and unfortunately, I put that there as a backdrop because these equations really define um, what we do as supply chain analytics people. Um, it's what we do. It's something that you can create. Or a lot of companies, they tend to buy this through various systems. Uh, and optimization programs. But if you want to work in this field, it is nice to be able to create your own algorithms. And um, there are all these programs that you can use, but it takes this kind of level of understanding about your supply chain to be able to create um, optimization programs. So things that I've seen currently in practice are inventory optimization, uh, for me, it's like, for example, I have a lot of Verizon wireless stores. I want to optimize the amount of inventory that is in my distribution center along with all the store locations. What is the right level so that I get 95% greater delivery performance, but at the <coughs> lowest amount of um, uh, working capital? Um, demand forecasting, I'm sure many of you have demand forecasting in place. Network optimization, you're looking at a supply chain that goes from OEMs, your suppliers, through distribution, through transportation legs, to uh, other you know, stores or, or factories, to the customer. How do you optimize the entire supply chain to minimize that cost? And of course, transportation routing, which is, what is uh, how do you route all these things? Like, for example, we use UPS or FedEx, they're doing transportation routing in terms of making sure they minimize the cost, also the transportation legs, to maximize the amount of basically delivery to the customers. Some areas that are really interesting that I'm seeing up and coming, uh, supply chain segmentation. Supply chain segmentation, I, I was reading it, it was like the New York Times about Macy's. So Macy's, um, has buyers that go out to all the different stores. And they basically look at what they put in each store. And they change the mix of products based on the demographics of that area. That's interesting. So can you imagine, um, for example, I would look at 2,000 stores, and I would change the mix of each store, depending on what is in that environment. So I would have some indication of what sells well in that particular area. For example, um, you'll hear in two months about risk and resilience, but it is making your supply chain a little bit more uh, resilient to, to things like force majeure, um, you know, basically storms, like, you know, winter storms. Like, it's been devastating with all these winter storms and delivering product through by transportation. It's, um, but you have to make your, your supply chain more resilient. Um, 
And then there's two things called market-driven supply chain and demand sensing. So market-driven as opposed to marketing-driven. Sometimes, a lot of times, marketing is a, it's a separate <coughs> department, but they push product into the supply chain. They say, okay, I want to sell this and this product, go ahead and push it through. There's a movement to say we should be market-driven, that we have actually, in the supply chain, all the information about where our products are going and where they're being sold, so that we can change the market mix, and we should have a say in what gets sold and what gets sold where. Um, and, and demand sensing. Again, I sort of talked to this before, the ability to actually uh, sense where demand is coming from. I, I was listening to Amazon.com, they just launched a patent, which said, and NPR did a whole story. They will ship you the product before you order it. And now, how do you ship a product before you even order it? Um, and I think what they meant was they will ship the, pr so their problem is that shipping is free for a lot of customers. So what they need to do is get the product as close as possible to the customer to minimize the shipping cost. So what they're trying to do is in each demographic area, try to figure out what customers will order so they can minimize that ship shipment cost. Um, so that's the way they're shipping product. And I just asked this question, Thomas Davenport back in 2011, he actually wrote a really interesting book about analytics and he probably started the whole movement of analytics with his book. But he asked the question, where does your company stand? You know, are you an analytical amateur? I mean, you basically use Excel or some sort of spreadsheet in your process to do all your analysis? Or are you an analytical semi-professional that you do have, you use basic statistics, you use some sort of visual, you can visualize your uh, analytics, you visualize your data somehow, or are you an analytical professional and you create your own algorithms? Um, and then there's these analytical ch champions that basically lead analytical initiatives. And um, I would say probably we're probably in there where we're creating the algorithms to optimize and predict our supply chain. But a lot of companies I can imagine, I mean, we use Excel too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's ubiquitous. It's, it's everywhere. Um, please ask questions if you have anything. Um, the other question I asked.